Sally Wright had grown accustomed to unfortunate outcomes and endured numerous adversities throughout her life. Her father, who served in the Marine Corps, tragically lost his life during a military operation in the Middle East Wars. In remembrance of her father's heroic past, Sally cherished his medals and award sheet. Her mother, Amanda Wright, did everything in her power to provide Sally with the basic necessities after her father's death. However, Amanda's relentless efforts to ensure her daughter's well-being took a toll on her own health. Juggling multiple jobs, she strived to increase the family income. Unfortunately, Amanda's love and dedication were not enough to fulfill all of Sally's needs. When Sally was just 12 years old, Amanda fell seriously ill. Despite her condition, Amanda persisted in working, knowing that their financial situation would worsen otherwise. Sally, deeply concerned for her mother's well-being, repeatedly offered her help. However, Amanda always declined, wishing to shield her daughter from the hardships of adulthood. Tragically, Amanda succumbed to bilateral pneumonia exacerbated by delayed admission to the hospital. Sally had already begun preparing herself for life in an orphanage. When a sudden turn of events occurred, it was discovered that Amanda's cousin had decided to take custody of Sally, saving her from that uncertain fate. Unfortunately, Elizabeth proved to be far from the nurturing aunt, who yearned to care for another person's child. Her true motive behind taking in Sally was simply to exploit the allocated orphan allowances from the local budget. Living with Aunt Elizabeth became an arduous experience for Sally. As neither Elizabeth nor her husband held any jobs, and they led an immoral lifestyle, Sally found solace in her room, clutching onto an old doll. As she was confined there for the majority of her time, the only reprieve from her isolation came when she was allowed to attend school. As even Aunt Elizabeth recognized the importance of education for her niece. As Sally grew older, the conniving Elizabeth realized that she could no longer profit from state allowances, prompting her to scheme a marriage for the young girl. Moreover, Elizabeth had her sights set on arranging a union between Sally and her friend's son who worked as a supermarket security guard and appeared, in Elizabeth's narrow-minded view, to be an ideal match. However, Sally held no fondness for Lloyd, who was solely interested in alcohol and used cars. Elizabeth berated her, calling her a foolish girl for failing to grasp the benefits of marrying someone like Lloyd, who could secure their financial future. Unbeknownst to Sally, Elizabeth had insured her niece. Likely for personal gain, the aunt grew increasingly impatient, eager to rush into a marriage with her friend, who owned a small liquor store on Main Street. Thankfully, Sally had no intention of being a part of this plan. One day, she decided to escape from her bothersome aunt. Anticipating such a situation, Sally pawned the pendant left to her by her mother, and used the money to rent a room on the outskirts of the city. Now liberated, Sally realized she needed to find a job quickly to ensure she would never have to return to her aunt's home. Sally tirelessly approached around a dozen companies, determined to secure employment. Eventually, she managed to land a job as a cleaner in one of them. Although it wasn't her ideal position, Sally refused to lose hope, believing that her life would eventually take a positive turn. During the interview process, Sally met with the deputy head of the HR department, as the department head was frequently away on business. However, the general atmosphere in the office was less than enthusiastic about the arrival of the new cleaning lady. The company's staff was far from friendly, and the overall atmosphere was hostile. 
The main reason behind this was Melissa Clayton. The unspoken leader of the office and the senior manager. Melissa. Known for setting the tone. Made a derogatory comment about the new cleaning lady's outfit. Mocking her appearance as if it were Halloween. The rest of the employees. As if programmed. Joined in laughter. Aiming to please the office queen. Sally. The young cleaning lady. Couldn't help but feel resentful as she listened to the caustic remark. However. She chose to remain silent. Realizing that arguing with the senior manager would be futile. My job is to clean, she thought. Holding back tears that welled up in her eyes. Despite Melissa's bitter remarks. The management had no complaints about Sally's work. With the arrival of the young cleaning lady. The office began to shine with cleanliness. Dust and marks left by dirty shoes on the light floor. Became nearly impossible to find. However. Not all employees treated Sally with prejudice. There were those who genuinely liked her. And among them stood out Kevin. As a recent hire and still considered a trainee. Kevin aspired to become a senior manager once Melissa Clayton was promoted. The young cleaning lady was unaware of Melissa's interest in him. Sally and Kenny managed to go to the movies. And grab a bite to eat after work only a few times. Unfortunately. The office gossip spread the news to Melissa that. Her boyfriend was dating the cleaning lady. Needless to say. The queen of the office was furious upon discovering Kevin's. Choice of spending his free time with someone she deemed unworthy. I will destroy her. I'll make her pay for it. Who does she think she is? Melissa seated. Clenching her fists in anger. The next morning. When Sally arrived at work. Everyone pretended not to notice her presence. Including Kevin. Who buried himself in his paperwork without acknowledging. The young cleaning lady or responding to her greeting. Melissa. Feeling she held all the power. Grumbled angrily when she confronted Sally in the back room. So. Now you understand. I'm in charge of everything around here. Find yourself a boyfriend outside of this company. Sally objected. Standing her ground. I believe Kevin is an adult who has the right to make his own decisions about what he wants to do. You do what you want. But consider this a warning, Melissa hissed. Leaving Sally to spend the rest of the day hoping that Kevin would talk to her. However. The man remained completely silent. Giving no indication of his thoughts. Although there was no formal relationship between Kevin and the office cleaner. The naive woman believed otherwise. It was hard to fathom the extent of Sally's sorrow as she wept bitterly. Her face buried in her pillow. She kept her feelings to herself. Anticipating ridicule from her co-workers. It's difficult to say what would have become of Sally. If she hadn't stumbled upon a homeless kitten during this challenging time. Observing the little creature trembling with cold and fear near a trash can. Sally approached it and gently picked it up. Don't be afraid. Dear. Everything will be alright, Sally whispered tucking the kitten inside her coat. On her way home, she purchased some cat food and a carton of milk. The owner of the house where Sally rented a room shook her head disapprovingly. You have nothing to eat and yet you bring a cat home. You're too kind, the woman whispered. But after a few moments of reflection, she put together some food and handed it to Sally. Thank you. But you don't have to do that. I can manage, Sally murmured. Attempting to decline the help. However. The old woman insisted. With the arrival of the little kitten. Sally's life gradually started to improve. She named the kitten Jerry. After the famous cartoon mouse. The kitten was equally tiny and resembled a small rodent. As Sally took care of her newfound pet. It seemed that her own troubles faded into the background. 
The once cruel and unfair nature of life seemed to fade away. However, Melissa remained unforgiving towards the charming cleaning lady who had started dating her boyfriend. She dedicated all her time to devising a plan for revenge, patiently waiting for the perfect opportunity. It finally presented itself when the staff anticipated the return of their director from a long business trip. Tension filled the office as higher management's imminent arrival loomed. Amidst the anticipation, Sally stood unaffected, believing that the director would pay little attention to her domain of mops and wet rags. Little did she know how mistaken she was. It all began when Melissa deliberately spilled a cup of coffee on the floor, expertly nudging it off the table with her elbow. The brown liquid spread, forming a puddle right in front of the director. Melissa, why is the office so dirty? Does no one care about it in my absence? Mr. Sanchez exclaimed, clearly annoyed. Excuse me. But it's the new cleaning lady. It's all her fault. She's a real slob. I don't even know what to do with her, Melissa lied effortlessly. Without batting an eye. Well, if that's the case. Please ask her to come to my office, the director said. His tone leaving no room for objections. The entire office froze as the director's words hung in the air. Melissa couldn't contain her jubilation. That's it. I won't have to endure the presence of this awful cleaning lady anymore. Mr. Sanchez will surely fire her, she thought, rubbing her hands gleefully. As Sally entered the director's office, her face reflected the worries that had plagued her in recent days. Miss, please introduce yourself and explain your behavior at the office. Mr. Sanchez asked coldly. Sally grew even paler but mustered up her courage before responding. My name is Sally Wright. And it wasn't my fault. Mr. Sanchez. It's all slander. What did you say? What's your last name? Was your father's name Jack? By any chance, the director asked in surprise. Yes. Mr. Sanchez. Actually, my father's full name is Jack Oliver Wright. How did you know that? Sally asked. In response to her question, the director put his head in his hands and grimaced. As if he were in pain. Then having pulled himself together, he said in a trembling voice. I knew your father, Miss Wright. We served in the Marine Corps together when there was a military conflict in the Middle East. We were under fire. I was wounded. And your father carried me out from under enemy fire. Then he died from a shell explosion, Mr. Sanchez said. Stammering on every word. Tears were flowing down the director's face. And it was clear that the man was reliving those terrible events all over again. Sally stepped closer and put her hand on the man's shoulder. I want to express my gratitude, Sally, and ask for your forgiveness. I should have sought your assistance much earlier, but I was consumed by my own business. Mr. Sanchez regretfully admitted when he finally regained composure. He called for the deputy head of the HR department and began issuing orders. Disregarding Sally's presence. Firstly, Mr. Sanchez ensured that Sally received a more fitting role within the company. Instead of being the cleaning lady, she was appointed as the manager of the sales department. Then, he summoned Melissa and informed her that she was terminated. In truth, this wasn't the first time Mr. Sanchez had been made aware of the senior manager's bullying behavior towards other employees. The situation with Sally was simply the final straw. From that moment onwards, the entire staff started treating the former cleaning lady with newfound respect. As if a magical transformation had taken place. Upon discovering that Sally had the support of the company's director, Kevin attempted to rekindle their relationship. However, 
Sally declined his advances. Sally never had an affinity for opportunists and was unwilling to forgive betrayal. After six months, the woman had successfully risen to the position of head of the sales department. Thanks to her unwavering dedication and hard work, Mr. Sanchez, who had advised her to pursue studies in economics, had been a guiding support throughout her journey. Sally took his advice and enrolled in a university, constantly reminding herself of the kindness her father had shown her. Mr. Sanchez continued to assist her in any way possible. And two years later, he proudly walked Sally down the aisle as she married Anthony, a kind-hearted man from a partner firm. With a smile and a playful remark, he expressed his happiness in witnessing the wedding of his friend's daughter, and eagerly anticipated the opportunity to attend her future children's weddings as well. Jerry, the cat, shared Mr. Sanchez's sentiment, and deeply cherished its new owner and their loving family. Meanwhile, Andrew Carter, a former Marine who had served under contract, had returned to civilian life, recognizing his capability to defend his country when needed. Andrew had fulfilled his duty, and felt no guilt about returning to his hometown in northern Nebraska, having grown up in an orphanage. Andrew had missed out on the warmth and affection of a family during his early years. However, he took charge of his life upon reaching adulthood and decided to test his character in the army. Although his military experience had equipped him with numerous skills, he found them to be irrelevant in civilian life. Consequently, Andrew struggled to find employment and was limited to options such as a loader or janitor. Initially, Andrew felt lost, torn between the two roles. However, during his decision-making process, something changed within him. He realized that his worth extended beyond his past experiences and job opportunities. Andrew understood that he had the potential to make a significant impact and contribute to society in a meaningful way. With this newfound perspective, Andrew embarked on a journey of self-discovery, determined to find a path that aligned with his true passions and talents. Andrew felt a sense of relief, as he learned that the janitor position had been filled. Instead, he was offered a job as a loader at a construction materials warehouse. He saw this as an opportunity to stay in shape and get paid for his workouts, rather than spending money on a gym membership. Confident in his abilities, Andrew went in for the interview. With no doubt in his mind that he would get the job, it seemed that the entire universe was supporting his desire to work there. Upon entering the building, he was immediately impressed by its size. With three floors in total, the first two floors were dedicated to the warehouse, while the third floor housed the staff offices and HR department. I can't believe how huge this building is. Andrew exclaimed with admiration. The company's success was due, in part to their wide range of products and impressive sales, which were made possible by their affordable prices. An extensive discount system. As Andrew climbed the stairs to the third floor, he found himself surrounded by the bustling sounds of managers taking orders and the whirring of faxes and printers. Initially feeling a bit overwhelmed, he struggled to find his way around. Moving from one office to another, he couldn't help but appreciate the efficient and coordinated work of the company employees. The third floor felt like a labyrinth with Ariadne's thread being invisible for some reason. While passing by one of the offices, Andrew noticed something unusual. It wasn't just the fact that there was a pretty young woman, around 25 years old, working there that surprised him. In a different scenario, the young man would have surely taken the opportunity to compliment the young woman. However, on that particular day, 
something caught his attention. There was a picture in a black frame on the young woman's table. And although it appeared ordinary at first glance, Andrew knew otherwise. To his astonishment, the man in the picture bore an uncanny resemblance to him. While the late man's hairstyle and attire differed, his facial features and physique mirrored Andrew's own. The young woman, who had been engrossed in her documents, looked up from her work and noticed Andrew standing nearby. Her cheeks flushed, and tears welled up in her eyes. Confused and curious, Andrew contemplated entering her office to inquire about the peculiar photograph before he could act. However, a woman from the HR department emerged from the adjacent room to greet him. Are you the new loader? The woman asked, accompanied by a warm smile. Andrew, still bewildered by what he had just witnessed, hesitated in responding to her question. Only when the woman repeated her inquiry did he nod his head, confirming his role. Soon, Andrew found himself seated in the HR department, carefully examining the contract he was expected to sign. As he perused the document, the HR woman posed several unexpected and probing questions, leaving him greatly surprised. One such question caught him off guard. What is your marital status? The HR woman inquired suddenly, feeling a sense of disorientation due to the mysterious photograph and the unusual line of questioning. Andrew attempted to make sense of the situation and gather his thoughts before providing an answer. Andrew's eyebrow shot up in surprise and he responded, Well, I'm single, but what does that matter? The woman explained. Relieved. It actually matters a lot. A married man is usually more responsible. And works harder because he needs to provide for his family. Andrew realized there was some logic to the HR woman's concern. And the question she was asking him. According to the schedule. Andrew was supposed to start work in two days. Why wait so long? Andrew asked with dissatisfaction in his tone. The HR manager replied. We need to work on your schedule to make sure. There aren't any overlaps and you can work without interruptions. With his signature on the contract. Andrew left the office with a sense of accomplishment. However. There was one thought spinning around in his head. Should he bring his photograph to the office or not? He couldn't understand how it ended up there in the first place. It was all so weird. Returning the way he came. Andrew was relieved to find himself outside. Basking in the warmth of the sun. Finally securing a job meant one less problem in his life. Which made him feel much better. As he took a few steps forward. He heard someone catch up to him. A gentle touch on his arm made him turn around sharply. And he was met with the sight of a woman in her mid-forties. Her face was kind and open. With sweet gray eyes. So. You are my son, the stranger exclaimed. Wrapping the astonished man in her arms. Andrew blushed and gently pushed the woman away. Taking a few steps back. I think you've mistaken me for someone else. I'm not your son. You've made a mistake. The man explained. Just then. A young woman came running out of the nearby warehouse. To Andrew's surprise. She was the same woman who had his picture in her office. It turned out she was Dolores Johnson's daughter-in-law. Confused and desperate to clear things up. Andrew pleaded. What do you want from me? This is all some kind of mistake or ridiculous misunderstanding. However. Before he could finish, the woman, April Green, took hold of his arms and pulled him towards her car in the parking lot. As they sat inside the car, April introduced herself as the daughter-in-law of Dolores Johnson. She explained that Dolores had an incredible story to share. One that would shock Andrew beyond belief. Taking a deep breath, 
April began to speak. She shared the tale of Dolores's youth. When she was in love with a man named Robert Parker. Dolores's mother strongly disapproved of their relationship. And did everything in her power to break them apart. Recognizing the challenges they would face as a couple. Dolores's mother. Natalie Johnson. Believed that building a life with an orphan would be difficult for her daughter. Despite their hardships. The young couple's love blossomed. And they were on the verge of getting married. Tragically. Just a month before their joyous wedding. Robert Parker died in a car accident. It was revealed that he had taken up a taxi job to earn extra money. For their wedding and had been working day and night to make ends meet. As April finished recounting the heartbreaking story, Andrew's emotions were in turmoil. The weight of Dolores's past and the pain she endured became clear. He couldn't fathom the depth of her loss and the impact it had on her life. Feeling a mix of sympathy and confusion. Andrew realized that his resemblance to Dolores's deceased fiancé had caused this mix-up. It was a case of mistaken identity that led him to this moment. The car sat in silence as the significance of the situation sank in. Andrew knew that he had to find a way to help Dolores. Heal from her painful past and rectify this misunderstanding. The road ahead was uncertain. But he was determined to make things right for this grieving woman. Who had mistaken him for her lost love. Dolores was a victim of overwork and chronic fatigue. Which tragically led to a severe car accident. The news of her groom's death left her in a deep state of shock. Worsened by the fact that she was already pregnant. To compound matters. An ultrasound revealed that Dolores was expecting twins. Recognizing the need to prioritize her daughter's well-being. Dolores' mother. Natalie Johnson. Focused on providing her with the necessary care and attention. Given Dolores' high-risk pregnancy. She spent a significant amount of time at the hospital. Despite the doctor's best efforts. Dolores went into premature labor. Resulting in an emergency C-section. Fortunately. The babies were born healthy. But Dolores slipped into a coma for a week. When Dolores finally regained consciousness. Natalie delivered the heartbreaking news that one of the babies did not survive. Unbeknownst to Dolores. Natalie had made the difficult decision. To place the deceased child in an orphanage. Recognizing her daughter's immense challenges as a single mother. Natalie believed it would be too overwhelming. For Dolores to raise two children alone. Unaware of this information. Dolores expressed her concern about the whereabouts of her brother. Pointing to a photograph. Impatiently. Andrew. One of the twins. Questioned what had happened to his missing brother. Seeking answers from Dolores. David. Who worked for the police. Tragically lost his life a year ago during a shootout with a dangerous criminal. Despite never meeting him. April was deeply saddened by his untimely demise. Andrew. David's brother. Was also devastated by the news. And didn't know how to process all the information. However. Dolores Johnson comforted Andrew. Offering him a warm welcome and love if he chose to come home. This brought a glimmer of happiness to Andrew. Especially seeing April's joy. With his mother's support. Andrew was able to pursue higher education. At the university and secure an internship. Experiencing the love of a real family. Andrew found immense happiness in calling Dolores, mom. One year later. His friendship with April blossomed into a romantic relationship. Despite moving forward in life. Andrew never forgot his brother and faithfully visited his grave every Sunday. Tearfully. Andrew apologized to his late brother for taking his place. Feeling David's presence and approval from heaven.